Whoa, what up, dude? What's up, bro? Dude, you shaved too. Oh, dude, man. I, I shaved. I was trimming my beard yesterday, and the guard broke off. And then, uh, so I just The classic beard, the guard break. Yeah. Accidental beard shave. Always a bummer. All right, well. Okay, we have the exact same beard. That's weird. Weird beards. Okay, so my first question is, uh, are you in Florida still, or did you go back home? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm still in Florida, Tampa. Yeah. yeah. You're just going to hang out? Is that the plan? Yeah, I mean, as of right now, we can still work out at the field and, and all that. So I think I'll yeah. be here until at least early April and then drive up to Detroit. So I don't know. We'll see. It's weird, weird cool. time for sure. Super. Well, yeah, that's kind of why we wanted to talk. I uh, appreciate you taking the time, man. So, um, oh, yeah, totally, man. So I think the last time, just to shoot the crap, I mean, I think the last time I saw you, we were at a, we were surfing in California, right? In uh, Ventura. Yeah. yeah which was, was like yeah. such a great Mondays. memory. Mondo's, that was so fun. So good. One of the best surfing days of my whole life. Such yeah. a good memory. That seems like a long time ago now, man. Yeah, we, I mean, we fully scored that day. I still think Super. about that. Never, never to be recreated, but it's like recreated, but such a good yeah, memory. Totally. So I heard you went surfing today. I did. I cruised after workouts. I cruised over to Cocoa Beach. It's a little like a two-hour drive and surf for five hours. So I'm like zonked right now. But, oh man, so, dude, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was it wasn't a, like the day at Mondo's, but it was really uh, yeah. Um, it was a lot really of catchable fun. waves. Yeah, there was it was like three to four feet, pretty consistent at low tide, yeah. and then yeah, I took my buddy Drew Hutchison. He uh, we used to play together on the Blue Jays. He lives here, so I took him. He'd never been surfing before, and he got his first wave. So I was like, Oh, that's surfing. sick, dude! That's yeah, really cool. It was really cool to see that. And uh, yeah, it was so what did I tell you about surfing in Coach? What did I tell you yesterday about surfing in Cocoa Beach? You said it's pretty sharky, and yeah, <laughs> unbelievably so. <laughs> Oh we, were like, we were like halfway through our session and like a set rolled in we were just kind of waiting on the back end and then like we're just, we're both just like sitting on sitting there waiting on the next set and all of a sudden we see this like probably five foot shark just yeah like breach out of the water like breach grab a fish like breach like did the twirl saw the underbelly and we both looked at each other like Whoa. <laughs> it was nuts man we were like i was like i looked at him i was like dude i've been surfing for almost nine years now and I, that's the second shark i've ever seen oh my god dude. But, uh, but yeah so we did you go out. in or did you just hang out honestly honestly we stayed in we stayed in i'm not really sure why the waves were good right then so we were like well we'll figure it out sounds sensible well, yeah yeah not probably not my best move but i'm still alive so hey man it could be worse like uh what's more scary the shark or the virus that's going on right now right i don't know dude, depends yeah. on your perspective it's pretty crazy. I think, like, I mean, obviously the virus is more scary right now. Yeah. It's just, it's just weird. It's weird because, you know, if you asked me that a week ago, I'll be like, well, yeah, we see it and we hear about it. But honestly, like, I don't know. It just didn't seem real. It seemed pretty different. And now all of a sudden it's yeah. very real. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. It's, it's, no, I agree. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty crazy. I think we um, – I think, you know, the tides are going to turn soon and yeah. we'll, you know, we'll get our distractions back being sports and yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but I don't, we got news today that the, uh, what is it? The NP, uh, NPJ or something, the Japan league is starting up their spring training. Oh, that's like good. This, they're starting like this week and yeah. I think they're, they're only like a month and a half ahead of us as far as the virus goes. So like hopefully right. we're. We're on the, I guess, coming up on the back end of it. So. Yeah, I've actually been kind of doing the same thing. I think like we, our metal bats are made in China, um, which is the best place to make them, by the way. But anyway, you know, we've been hearing about the coronavirus now for like almost two months over there because for a while they were shut down, right? Totally, yeah. So like in a way, one of the things that's helping us okay, calm over here is like our buddies over there who are making our metal bats are coming back online. Okay. and. They're making bats again, so it's kind of this good feeling to hear from them about like that stuff is passed and things are starting. They're not by any means normal, but you know they're they're totally. on the way back. So that's that's similar. That's good. 
I mean, yeah, that's great news. It's like, I don't know. It, it, it's just weird. It's just weird. You know, it's, it's weird to think about how much of a halt everything has come to. If anything, yeah. though, I will say this. I mean, if there's anything... If there's anything good that's coming out of this, like I saw, I saw the air quality in LA is like ninety percent better because people are out. You know, no way, and what, that fast. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. if this is like a reset for everything. Then great, that's great news. But um, yeah, I, I mean, the the reset probably goes into so many different directions. <laughs> Just like for everybody personally, um, if they can stay calm, like it's you know, it's kind of calming around. The, it's so weird, like even around you know, I got kids, and it's like. I mean, yeah, they're bored, but it's calm. And it's like, right. you definitely start to get that perspective back faster yeah. about what matters and what doesn't matter. In a way, like, it's actually a super relieving feeling to, like, you have all these, you know, I'm very good about having a million things going on at once, but it's, like, very yeah. easy right now to go, only that, that, and that really matter right now. Everything else, <laughs> which is really how we should try to be every day, right? And I know I, that you're... Yeah, I feel like this is... I feel like this could be hard for you because I've never met anybody that can juggle more things than you at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but at least I know better, right? Like, I have a yeah. concept of trying to be a minimalist, but I never get close. That's why I like to hang with you on those days. It's a little easier, you know? Yeah. No, totally. I mean, it was it was cool. Like, that day we were at Mondo's, like, it, you know, we wanted to get some photos for the board, but then it just turned into, like, a really fun session. And then yeah. your, um, you know, like, your, your kid, like, surfing with your kids was so rad. Like, they're just ripping and. That was cool, man. It was, I remember we came out of that day thinking, like, that's what it's all about, right? And so much yeah. of life is, like, trying to find those moments of, like, you know, we do all this work, so so hopefully we can have just even those simple things that didn't even cost money, right? Yeah. No, exactly. Pretty crazy. We, we surfed probably, what, like, five hours that day, and then it was, like, we went and grabbed a coffee, and that was, like... Because you need to savor it, you know? Like, that's that, the coffee yeah. is the savor what just happened part and make sure it sinks in. We were just, like... All we needed in that moment after was a coffee, and then just like it's so simple. The simplicity of that was like yeah. so beautiful. Just to have like a really great session, a fun day, and then yeah, just with good people. I, I don't know. Yeah, man, no, I agree. I, I, I yeah, go ahead. Man. No, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think it's kind of like I think the perfect day is something like that. But I have to admit too, like. You know, there's something to having a purpose and, you know, work. And, I like, I love work, too. Like, and having, like, what you're working on. If you can get a little bit of that in one day and you can get what we just talked about, that's, like, the, totally the epic thing day, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, I see, a guy, I see a, guy, a lot of guys that surf, like, only. That's all they do. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah. A little that's bit of, like, what else? Like that's, that's Nothing against that. that, but I'm also, like, there's the contributing part, I guess, the contributing to what, I don't know, like to the culture, to society, to what people are doing, like you want to be contributing to. And I guess that's where the work, I'm hoping that the work, you know, that's what the work's about. But, um, I mean, you it's know. All about, it's all about purpose, right? Like, yeah. I went, I go through phases too, just in my personal life. It's like, man, I play baseball for a living. Like, what am I really doing to like, garner a purpose as far as that goes but then it's like especially at this time now i'm reflecting on it and i'm seeing how much like the game of baseball means to so many people and it really yeah. does like kind of give you a better understanding of that purpose you know because from our yeah. and you obviously like when you played it's like you know we're just playing a game we love since we were young yeah and and, and it kind of in a way almost feels selfish at times because you're just like oh i want to play i want to win ball games in the grand scheme of things, if, if you, like, take a step back and look, you're like, it doesn't really matter that much. But now, like, especially right now, it, it kind of feels like it matters, you know? Yeah. People are just like, people are just like, man, like, I miss baseball. People I never thought really loved baseball, they're just like, I'm really missing turning yeah. the TV on and seeing games, you know? No, man, we you, you provide so many things for people. And I think, uh, you know, even you got to throw in that you guys do – have the opportunity to make a lot of money and that can be selfish but also it's like you know i have this you know most of the guys that we connect with like yourself like we have this feeling that they're doing it yeah it's all it's definitely for you but it's also like you're building you know you're you're working hard to build a platform and then i know that you guys are going to do something good with that platform you know Absolutely. yeah and the no, platform is massive the, pl the platform is no joke the platform is huge so i mean there's guys that will abuse that and there's guys that are going to do wonderful, awesome things with that. And so that's why we love to see guys like you 
make it, man. That's why we cheer for you, you know? Yeah. Like, cheer for the good guys, you know? Totally. I mean, it's a family. It's like a brotherhood of, like, we all understood this dream at an early age, and we just want to make it happen for everybody. But, like, the longer you play the game, especially at this level, you know, the major league level, it's like – I just remember looking at my Chipper Jones poster every night and just being like, I want to make it because I love watching him play. Yeah. And now it's like you look back on it and you're like, yeah, he inspired me to chase a dream. That's crazy. I was going to say, like, inspiring joy is not, I mean, just in and of itself, maybe enough, right? That's the reason the guys that go do that, if they can do that for other people, you know? And, totally. like, that's why I guess, like, even, like, I don't know why the first person that came to my mind was Miggy. I mean, the guy can hit, but, like, there's something about watching him too that's just like joyous all the time. He just has so much fun, oh, and that translates, you know. Miggy, people don't realize how human Miggy is, you know. Oh yeah. Like, like people see Miggy and he's like, he's just so happy-go-lucky, and he is. I mean, he really, truly is. And but they see him on the ball field, you know. Being a teammate of his, I see how much he genuinely cares about the game of baseball. Yeah. And it's just like that's that's why he plays the way that he does, you know. It's, yeah so free-spirited and, and just having yeah. fun it's because it's like he understood how much how fortunate he is to play this game you know and it's not i know like and i bet i met most people wouldn't think that about miggy because he's such a god of baseball and everything but like i also see it as like partly why he's probably so good like the guy's so free of like he's so in tune with the joy of enjoying it that he really can he can hit <laughs> he's right. not yeah. You know, that's a part of it, too, you know. He, he's fully there. Like, he, I don't think he's thinking too much about the past or the future. He's, like, he's there having fun, man, and he's intense. He enjoys the intensity in the competition, you know. Yeah, he's – He. I mean, he works, he works really hard, too. I mean, it's, it's, it's great to kind of see that perspective of his, too. I mean, so, speaking of competition, I mean, I guess I'm sitting here thinking, like, it's interesting to me that our pro players like yourself down to – you know, it's just sucks for the college guys and the high school guys. I mean, it's most likely even for the high school guys, it's just over this season. But, like, it's strange to me that their highest level guys and then, like, our, our youth guys, they're both kind of in the same spot. Like, there's no competition right now among anything else. You can kind of play baseball. You can work out. You can hit. You can drill. You can all these things. But the, there's no competition. Yeah. And, and it's like I got 10- and 12-year-olds going through this, and I got, you know – you guys doing the same thing so yeah. it's like i guess our main reason for getting on here is to just you know um see if you guys can relate to them and they can relate to you a little bit because right now you guys are more than ever are kind of in the same spot right so yeah what's your I, um yeah i mean i know that it's kind of easy to say like if you really love the game you're missing the competition right now if you don't maybe i don't know what you're doing playing but like yeah what's your what's your mindset right now um, and really, like you, I don't care what other guys think. I, this is about Daniel. Like, what does Daniel think right now about missing baseball? And, like, what's your plan of moving forward through the next two weeks, two months, and however long this goes about how you stay connected to the game and what you're going to do to stay in shape, things yeah. like that? You know, I. that's a great question. And this, this might sound weird, but nothing – as far as the mentality has really changed for me. Of course, I miss, like, being between the lines and playing in front of the fans and all that. But for me, I think that the competition for me, every day I step foot in the weight room, it's like game on. This is my yeah. opportunity to get better. Um, I, really, I really took another level of training just, you know, in the past few years. Like, I've always worked hard, but – it was more just to stay healthy. Like, I was like, oh, I have to be in here to be healthy. Um, but in the last couple of years, like, every time I step foot in there, it's for my mind. You know, so, like, yeah. every time I go, every time I go in the training room or, or the, the gym, it's like, all right, I'm going to get better here. But also, I'm going to I'm gonna work out because, if you know, if I redline my body today, I know that I have nothing to worry about when game time comes because I've prepared, right. checked every box, and that's – so for me, that's my competition with myself. Um, when that game time does come, yeah. whether it's two weeks or a month from now, it's like, okay, I've checked every box. I've worked as hard as I possibly can. Now this is yeah. time. And that, yeah. that's like, I got that advice from Roy Halladay before he passed. And yeah. it stuck with me, you know. It's, it's just like, okay, if I train as hard as I can, 
I don't have to worry about getting people out. Like, I know that I did everything I can, and it's, if it happens, it's, it's, if it happens, it's because I earned it. And if not, then either I got to work harder, or maybe I just got to, you know, realize like, hey, it, it was just one of those days. But every day is an opportunity to get better, you know. And yeah. So you, I mean, you're specifically talking about training, right? You're talking about check the boxes on my physical ability is one thing, but. I can check the box on knowing that I trained as hard as I can and all the different aspects of what's available to, available to me. So at the end of the day, when I go out there, at least I know all that's good. Yeah. Right. So you have nothing to worry about. And you trust like, that. Yeah. Then it's like you, you let your hard work pay off. You don't have to try. You don't have to try to get people out. It's like, I got people out in the weight room. Now it's just letting it happen. And if it didn't happen, if it doesn't happen, you know, you're, you're obviously going to give up hits. You're going to give up runs. Like that's guaranteed at some point. Yeah. But you, you almost I can sleep easy at night after a bad game because it's like well I did everything in my power and now yes. I'm, you know I'm gonna get back after it tomorrow you know and that's in this time in this downtime where we're not playing games it's it's like just a bunch of boxes to check you know every day you wake yeah up, I mean I, yeah I mean we talk so much about the mental over here at Warstick and I'm kind of studying it hit me the other day I'm kind of like you know who should be prepared for this I mean, there's so many mentally tough and mentally resilient people out there, but I mean, I'm kind of thinking, I want to tell these kids like, hey man, you play baseball, you go through a tough thing all the time. You fail all the time. In a yeah. way, you're, this is much bigger, obviously much, much more, much harder to deal with, but at least on a micro level, you're dealing with failure all the time. And so maybe, maybe you should be the guy in your group that's like, hey, let's keep, let's keep it together, man. Yeah. Let's keep positive and stuff like that. And you know, maybe it's baseball players. These guys are a little bit more, you know, they, they could be the leader of, you know, they, I'm sure every kid right now is texting with their friends and they can't see them, but it's like, you know, you can either freak out, which isn't going to do any good. You can be responsible about what's going on, but you know, the best thing you can do is be calm, stay poised, all these things that you learn in baseball, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. I think like a big misconception is <clears throat> you see certain guys, like the superstars, right? Like the Mike Trouts, the, Kershaw's, the DeGroms, the Verlanders, the Miggies, all those guys you see there, I'm like, well, they just have more talent. And yeah, of course they have a ton of talent, but yeah. or maybe they're just better at failing, you know, like yeah. they don't, they let it drive them instead of it keeping them up at night. It's like, oh, I got to get better. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's especially, that's why, you know, I appreciate Warstick so much. It's like kind of preaching that mentality. It's like when you, when you get a Warstick bat, you're like, there's something different about it. I don't know. Which, by the way, by the way, I, I do want to say, um, <laughs> that my my model my model has four home runs this spring. Not by me. What? Somebody somebody stole my. Someone's Travis taking Demerit. your bat and hitting bombs yeah. with it. Travis Demerit stole my bat. Out <laughs> oh, of, nice. Out of the the clubhouse, and he has like four <laughs> bombs this spring. So, yeah. Hey man, any friend of Daniel is a friend of ours. So tell him, you know, hey. <laughs> Make some bats for the future because it's coming back. That's great. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's no that, that makes sense. Your your model is just like a straight up like like badass two seventy one that's been around for eighty years that never gets out of style. You know, so it's like who doesn't love a good two seventy one? Who doesn't love a good two seventy one? Jeter, uh, Griffey. I mean, <laughs> yeah. go down the list, man. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's it's easily like if we could only make one model and if it, and if everybody went to one model, boom, that's it. It's just it's basically. It just has barrel. It's just all barrel. Yeah. I know you can hit. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I want to I wanna start. I want to get you back to your life here in a second. But um, yeah. I guess I want to say I'm trying. I guess I want to work for the parents here. I think the, the hardest, you know, I, I, my wife, of, since I've known since I was 12, and, you know, my business partner, um, I, I'm feeling like the moms are just – they've got it so hard right now. A lot of these moms are not only being a mom like they always are, but they're having to homeschool their kids right now. Yeah. Like, like they're literally having to do four or five hours of homeschooling, not by choice because that they're, that's what they have to do. And then on top of that, they've got kids that want to be out there playing baseball, but can't or whatever sport it is. And the kids are bored. And it's like, I feel like one of the things that we can do to help them a little bit is at least like, I think any mom would appreciate can we give the kids some things to go be working on and doing, um, you know, in their, they've got all this time, you know, but at, at the same time, they're at home, 
they've got maybe their backyard, maybe they don't even have a backyard. Let's say they don't. Let's say they've got their apartment. So like, and I want to talk, you're, I know you can hit, but like, let's, say, let's, let's use your pitcher side today. Like, can you think of like, and I know you're such a workout guy and a health and nutrition guy, but like, um, can you think of any simple drills or anything that they could be doing to improve whatever core strength it might be? Or like, give me three exercises that you think would be good for kids to be doing if they're confined to that, you know, that it's yeah. at least something. I know that's putting you on the spot and I didn't warn you about that, so. No, I mean, it's good because I've been doing it. Like, obviously, like I said, we can still go on and work out at our facility in Lakeland which is great, but for me, I've also been doing, like, a jailbird workout. Mm. Place. Like, jailbird, with, like, guys that are in jail, like, hey, they work out in a confined yeah, space, right? Just, like, like I mean, um, push-ups, planks, sit-ups. Like, isometric that. stuff, right? Like, pushing against a wall, even, or yeah. pulling a towel? Yeah. I'm, I'm big. I'm big into yoga. Like, I really enjoy I'm not saying I'm good at it, but it does help me a lot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, push-ups, sit-ups, planks, all that stuff to just get to your core stability. Staying. Yeah, and also, I mean, dude, going back to when I was a kid, I would I'd grab a brown paper like a lunch bag, like you know, a brown paper bag. I get a twenty five cent bouncy ball from Fuddruckers, this burger <laughs> joint. And I would go to a brick wall and I would just throw it, and I would work on fielding and throwing, and like I draw like a a square there, and I would just work on everything, you know. And so there's and you there's credit your ninety five mile hour fastball to this one exercise as a kid. That's finally the secrets out. <laughs> Holy yeah, crap! Exactly. It's a, That's it's bad a Twenty-five ass. cent bouncy ball. Yeah. I mean, I told my kid. My kid. One of my. I have three boys. One's fourteen. He walks in, and I'm like, "You're bored, huh?" And he goes, "Yeah." I was like, <laughs> "Go to the garage and work out. We have a squat yeah. rack. We have weights." And he came back. He's like, "All right, I did it. I feel good." I go, "Look, man. This is the main thing you can do. This is an opportunity to get stronger. You're growing. Like, there's one thing you can do right now. You can get stronger, no doubt." There's no reason to get weaker through this. You have all the time in the world. Usually it's like life is so crazy. You don't have – It's that's a challenge to always be right. getting your workouts and getting stronger. But, like, they got time now, and I'm like, they could do nothing but help you. So, Yeah. I mean, I agree. It's like you, you have two options. You can lay down and watch Netflix like a lot of people are doing, or you can find ways yeah. to get better, you know. You can do, like I said, push-ups, all that good yeah. stuff. Like you, There's opportunities out there. You just got to be creative. Yeah, man. Um, well, you know what, I'm gonna, I, this is dangerous, because I could obviously, because you're such a good bud, I could talk all day, in three hours, but I'm trying to keep these things to like, you know, 20 minutes and stuff. So, dude, so thankful for you doing this, and oh, just letting people you, see you, because I mean, if I could just, like you said about Miggy, if I could have all of our youth players, like actually know you guys, and how great a guys a lot of you guys are, it would just, I think it would change their uh, I don't know. It'd just be so great for them. So I appreciate you uh, being human with us today. Okay, My pleasure. Anytime, man. All right, man. All right, man. Stay good. Hey, stay stoked, yeah, man. Yeah. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Bye, bye. Yeah.